Can you see that? Yes. Perfect. Uh, so uh, first I'll start with a little bit of background. Um, so at Access Architects, we do mostly architecture, obviously, uh, but we're also, we're also developers. Uh, but when we develop a project, um, it has a strong basis in architecture and a, a very uh, strong priority uh, for architecture. Uh, we try to create communities and a, a sense of uh, place. Uh, in this particular case, this community is very open and connected to the neighborhood. It has uh, 58 townhomes, uh, very modern design, open floor plan concepts for the units. Um, the site has a lot of open space with numerous uh, amenities, such as uh, pickleball court, uh, community garden, uh, barbecuing areas, kids playground. Uh, the buildings are green. We're using passive solar. As you can see with the, with the boxes, shading, uh, the windows, uh, ener energy efficient uh, design. Um, we have uh, a lot of the units have private yards and balconies or Juliet balconies. And um, there is a lot of visitor parking, even though it's not required by code. But I think that's important uh, to respect the, the surrounding neighborhood. So this site is uh, approximately 2.37 acres. And so it's fairly large uh, and it is in a CB zone, uh, which allows multifamily, um, but not all the units are able to face the street because of the size of the development. And so a planned development is required by the city. Um, the uh, proposed project complies with all of the other uh, developments, all the other requirements of the CB zone. And it is designed to meet several of the objectives of the plan development process, which are uh, housing, mobility, and master plan implementation. And I will go over these briefly even though they're more detailed into the actual application itself. So first, uh, paragraph C2, housing. Um, uh, the proposal should include housing types that are not commonly found in the existing neighborhood, but are of a scale that is typical to the neighborhood. So, you know, there are not a lot of townhomes in that neighborhood. So, um, you know, it is not very common, but it, uh, it works with the ex existing scale of the other buildings in the neighborhood. Um, the smaller yards and footprints of these townhomes, which are about 1,600 square feet, mean that this development will make community pathways, green spaces, and amenities available to the larger community. And these new and more efficient designed dwelling units will also be highly energy efficient, helping to keep overall housing costs under control. Second is D1, mobility. Uh, we're creating a new interior block walkway connections that connect through a block or improve connectivity to transit or the bicycle network. So the site has uh, a connection mid block um, from Glendale and it connects through the project uh, to the amenities and back to the uh, public streets. Um, lastly, F1, Master Plan Implementation. This project is directly tailored to fulfill the intent of the West Side Master Plan. Um, the, the Master Plan has three direct goals for this, um, for this neighborhood, and it specifically refers to the intersection uh, of Glendale and Navajo as a node. Um, so here we're lucky to have a, a direct explanation of what the master plan requires for, for this site. Um, the three direct goals for the master plan are residential density, creating viable mixed use nodes and encouraging redevelopment within the neighborhoods through compatible higher density residential development. Um, and of course, not every project should be required to meet 
all of the goals of the zone, uh, but our project happens to do that. So uh, the first step described by the master plan is that the additional density may increase the demand enough in the immediate area to attract additional businesses to the node or encourage local business, business development. Um, so we added some live work units. So all the units that are facing Glendale and Navajo Street are live work, which means that uh, they have um, a commercial component on the lower level. So this basically, this project, by creating additional um, density will generate interest uh, for commercial. Right now, uh, what is described in, this, in the master plan is that the neighborhood doesn't have enough density. And so businesses opened right now are likely to fail. Um, and so the first step described in the master plan is to create the density of housing, which will then support uh, the um, local businesses. So our project will help that since it already includes live work units, which can turn into, into businesses. And uh, with that, uh, I can uh, conclude uh, that our project meets all the intent of the uh, master plan and um, that uh, the, the plan development we hope will be approved. Thank you. Um, can, so we're getting a couple of questions that are coming in um, from the Facebook. So I'm gonna paraphrase some of them. Um, but the first one was, can you define what the live workspaces look like? Um, so will, the, the, will they rent as separate units or are they actually the same unit? Uh, can you just explain that a little bit? Sure. So let me see if I can find a picture that describes that uh, pretty well. Uh, okay, this is an example of one of the units that is facing um, Navajo Street. And again, all the units facing Navajo Street and Glendale are that same type. Um, as you can see, the unit has a, a front yard, uh, but as you come into the front yard, you have the choice to go into the dwelling with the door on the left. And it also has a, a large glass door open to the commercial part of the, of the live work. And so that's uh, an area that could be used for, for example, a photographer or an accountant or um, you know, a, num a number of, of uses that require a small, uh, a small area. Um, to operate a business. And um, the great thing about these is that since the CB zone, which this project is in, is both commercial and multifamily, um, the, uh, the tenants uh, will obtain uh, very easily a business license uh, to, to run from their, from their dwelling unit or the lower portion of the dwelling unit since uh, that is already a commercial zone. Um, I think to completely answer the question, I think, um, uh, it, it, does, that, does that answer the question? Uh, yes, I think that puts a finer point on it. Thank you. Um, you, you had uh, addressed this earlier, but there was another question about just traffic and parking in the area. So if you don't mind, could you just kind of explain what you uh, had previously talked about with visitor parking and that type of thing? Sure, so um, in this zone, um, uh, we're required to provide um, two parking spaces per unit. Um, and so we've provided a two car garage per unit um, and there's no other requirements, but we've chosen to provide additional uh, parking since we had the space to do so and um, so you can see uh, on the, on the uh, site plan, the additional um, visitor parking, which will help so that we don't have visitors parking on the street, for example, um, or, or kind of add, add to, the, uh, to the traffic in the area. 
Thank you. Um, an another question came in, uh, are these units required to be live work or could they be 100% residential? So could they be two residential units uh, kind of stacked on top of one another or do they have to be split between commercial and residential? They don't have to be. In fact, there's a connection inside the unit uh, to that live work space. So a person could use that additional space as a a studio or uh, you know additional kind of multi-purpose space for their dwelling. They don't have to run a business. But the idea with the master plan is that you create the density first of the housing and then businesses will develop. And so these units are capable uh, to turn into a live work, but they don't have to be at the beginning. Thank you. Um, give me just one second. Of course. Uh, can you tell me how much the average unit will cost? Uh, that's hard to say at this time, but, um, and we don't even know if the units will be for sale or for rent. Um, but these are definitely going to be, you know, entry level, um, uh, you know, compared to the, their market rate, but they will be, uh, you know, entry level compared to other townhomes in the area. Okay. Uh, let me see. I'm just seeing if any additional questions have come in. Um, so a, a resident has asked, is there a chance that the development becomes 100% residential and that we lose uh, some of the commercial nodes or will the those units be restricted to commercial uses the the lower level units uh you know they they won't be restricted um uh, again the 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 idea behind the master plan uh the city's master plan is to first create density so that the rest of the node um can survive i mean right now the issue is you know there is there is commercial right now, but the but the business is failing, and that's why that's why they're selling because there's just not enough residential to support that grocery store. Thank you. Let's see. Um, th this next question was asked, but it's not necessarily a question for you. Um, although if you can answer it, I'd appreciate that. But do you know a? approximately what this might do to property values? Is it going to send adjacent values up or, or what do you expect there? Oh, there, there's no doubt that uh, surrounding properties value would go up. Anytime that we've uh, developed projects, uh, that's what's happened. So uh, we, we just finished a couple of years ago, a project on Main Street and 15th South and uh, the units sold very quickly and, and uh, it's helping cleaning up the neighborhood by bringing residents that are owners. Um, it's, it's helping the surrounding properties. Thank you. Um, I don't see any additional uh, questions coming in um, about this proposed development, but I'd like to thank you for your time. Um, for those of you that are watching, the next step is that this will go to the planning commission for review. Uh, I just did see another question come in. Uh, can you speak to maybe what type of businesses you'd anticipate uh, developing in the commercial spaces in this uh, proposed development? Sure, so I think uh, they would be, um, in, in um, the same vision as the master plan, which are you know, small businesses. Um, they could be you know, accounting services, um, like I said, a photographer, maybe a small Pilates class, um, you know, mostly small, small businesses. Thank you. Um... You know, it could be, I don't, you know, a variety of things, interior designer, you know, various um, 
businesses that need a, a small space and the ability to have customers come directly into their into their um, storefront. Thank you. Um, with that, I'm just going to let the audience know that I'm out of my prepared questions. If you have additional questions you'd like me to ask, I'd appreciate it if you put them in the chat. Uh, the, the kind of final thing that I do have prepared that I'd like to let residents know is that this is the beginning of the process. The proposal has been sent to the Planning Commission, uh, and that will be the next step for folks that want to engage on this uh, project. So the Community Council won't be taking a position. We uh, exist to just get folks involved and provide uh, civic engagement opportunities. So we just wanted to uh, provide this information. Um, I am going to share a link to the PDF that we've been using on the presentation and to the Planning Commission so that folks that watch either this live right now or that watch the recording have an opportunity to weigh in. But Pierre, I'd just like to thank you for your time today. 